All right, the NFL came out with a top 100 list, uh, improving once it's again. Terrible. Pl <laughs> players don't watch the games. We do, and analysts do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But what I thought was funny is Lamar was punished for missing games. Dak wasn't, even though the Ravens' offense essentially dried up without Lamar, and the Cowboys went four and one without sure. Dak. For some reason. Again, the, the, the Cowboys games get more notoriety than Raven games. It's remarkable to me how Lamar was punished for missing five games and Dak wasn't. That was one of my takeaways. Your thoughts on well, the list. Okay, so uh, I, can we also talk about Trevor Lawrence's ranking in a moment, but let me stay on <laughs> Dak and Lamar yeah. first. Uh, the, I think the rationale would be that there is a feeling that Lamar is more injury prone than Dak, even though I don't know that history necessarily backs that up because Dak obviously has, since Lamar's been in the league, suffered a far more significant injury when yeah. he broke his leg. Yeah. I just think maybe stylistically there is more concerns for right. uh, Lamar than for Dak. I, I also think there is an element of it kind of shows what you value because I do think it's somewhat undeniable that Lamar's A plus game is flatly better than oh, Dak's A plus oh, game. Oh yes, but Dak is a far more consistent performer. So if you could, all, if you're choosing between them, do you want the one with the high high ceiling, but whose floor can get really touch and go at times? Because when Lamar's having a bad game it feels like he can't hit the layups, or Dak, whose ceiling and floor are somewhat compacted, but you're typically going to get like a nice B-plus level performance. So I, I, would have, I would have Dak a touch higher on a quarterback rankings, but they're, they're right in the same neighborhood, and if you were to guarantee me Lamar's best, then he's a top four quarterback in the league. Yeah, to me, I would take Lamar because I'm not beating Mahomes with a ceiling. Well, that's right. That's right. No, so, that's true. Yeah, so I... It, 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 the, 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 yeah. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I mean, I think it would be different in a seven-game series, I'd take Dak. But if we're talking one game, yep. I want the ceilingless player, and I'm not beating Mahomes, Burrow, and Allen with ceilings. That's why Kirk Cousins and Dak don't have playoff wins. I'll take Lamar's flaws. There are Sundays, he looks like the best player in football, not name Mahomes. That's 100% correct. It's also why the Ravens you could make an argument, are the scariest team for the Chiefs in the AFC because they are the only team that if the Chiefs are playing their A game, maybe could beat the Chiefs because if the Ravens are playing, if Lamar is firing perfectly, they are such a different style of offense and such a different animal offensively to have to beat. But that list, Colin, I want to give credibility to the list. But if you think Trevor Lawrence <laughs> is the 14th best quarterback in football, then you're just not paying attention. Right. Trevor Lawrence, last year from November on, was number two in the league in passer rating, in touchdown interception ratio. The Jaguars went seven and two. Last year, despite only playing two playoff games, had more, uh, no one other than Mahomes had more playoff touchdown passes. The guy who has been screaming his whole career, he's Peyton Manning 2.0, got his first playoff victory four years earlier into his career than Peyton did. Peyton, who had three consecutive bad playoff games to start his career. Trevor had two consecutive bad playoff quarters, then executed one of the five greatest postseason comebacks ever. I think Trevor Lawrence is one of the five best quarterbacks in football. Yeah. I think you can make an argument that he that there's Mahomes, there's Burrow, and then in the discussion for number three, that Trevor is going to plant himself there this season. I know that's probably a little rich for most people's blood. That Jalen Hurts is right there. Obviously, people love Josh Allen and Justin Herbert. Uh, 
But 14th is outrageous. Yeah. And I think Justin Fields one day might be good, and maybe that one day is this year. But having Justin Fields ahead of Trevor Lawrence, having those other guys on the list ahead of Trevor Lawrence is just indefensible in my opinion. Well, I, you know, I said this uh, to start the show. I, I talked about this, that players tend to love athleticism. That's why Westbrook is loved. Even LeBron thought he could make it work. They love the home run derby. They love the dunk contest. They love Zach Levine. Players tend to give athleticism, sheer athleticism. You play above the rim, players love you. Power in baseball, players love you. They don't watch PFF. They don't, they're not on the Warren Sharp analytics stuff. They're not watching Red Zone, right? So for players, they see highlights. And Justin Fields highlights. I've said this. He's a YouTube quarterback to this point where his highlights are undeniable. But you and I, and I've said this about Mahomes for years. He's got a Michael Jordan quality. Michael scored 27 points a night mid-range. And then three times a game, sure. it was jaw-dropping. But Michael was really yep. fundamentally brilliant. Mahomes had three throws in the Super Bowl, one run and two throws that you were like, okay, that's, that's unbelievable. But Mahomes has but mastered. Everything else is precision. He's mastered the, the layout. precision dicing you up. And so the, my concern 100%. with Fields. Is, so you're, I, I don't know about Fields to this point. Do you? No, you can't. Any, and I know it's become very in vogue on other networks to say he's an MVP caliber player. I'm not closing the door on that, but I have no reason to open it. There is nothing we have seen yet to say he's going to be a great player. Now, in his defense, he had a horrific offensive line, no receiving core, the defense did him no favors. So I am, I am absolutely not saying, oh, he's not gonna work out. My, my bet would be that he is in a couple years going to be generally considered a top 10-ish quarterback in this league. But everything, everything past that is wish casting. Everything past that is saying, I don't care that I haven't seen it yet. Because what we've seen is he is an dynamic athlete and throws a really great deep ball and I don't and I hesitate to do the black quarterback to black quarterback comparison but in this regard it's accurate that the same was true about Robert Griffin the third but he never turned into a great player now he got injured or maybe he would have so I'm not putting a ceiling on Justin Fields but I'm not preemptively elevating him the other thing that I found find interesting about today's top call it eight quarterbacks in the league, Colin, other than Burrow, are all of them either B-plus or higher mobility-wise? I mean, Trevor is a great athlete. He's 6'6 and can move. Dak probably should move more. We know what a great runner Lamar is. Obviously, Josh Allen. Obviously, Jalen Hurts. Mahomes, it seems like in, in all of his great playoff victories, one of the biggest plays is made with his legs. It feels like the stationary, pure pocket passer Burrow's the only one holding up the tent yeah. for uh, that type of quarterback. And Burrow's great enough and poised enough and tough enough to make it work. But I, even Herbert, he doesn't run much, Colin. But at Oregon, I'm, I know you were watching it. You're up watching West Coast football like a degenerate gambler, even <laughs> though you don't, you're not even gambling on it. You just love it. Uh, I, Herbert ran the hell out of the ball at Oregon. Yeah. And so all of these guys are dynamic athletes, it would seem, except for probably Burrow. So um, Sean Payton uh, tempted the football gods, had two injuries yesterday after he ripped another coach. I also said never, yeah. never uh, uh, get too tough with a guy with a shaman. Aaron Rodgers can't be messed with now. Uh, the karma's on oh. his, his, karma's on his side. Yeah. But I will say this. One of the things, I think we both like Aaron Rodgers, but there was a prickliness and a retirement droning on talk that was tedious. I liked him early. I got tired of him. But he has shown an ability to look in the mirror and go, I'm not going to do this and this anymore. And I've got to be honest, I'm falling in love with Aaron. I'm, I'm like, oh, my God, I, oh, the, I love this guy. Have you ever had an athlete you were highly critical of for years and you pivoted? Because I'm watching Aaron and I'm like, oh. this is great, Aaron. Yeah. 
So I, so it's funny because you and I have kind of done the reverse dance on Aaron. I was one of his biggest supporters and I've gone somewhat in the other direction and we can talk more about him in a moment. But as far as to answer your question, I think the probably my answer is Durant. That I, I thought Durant's move to Golden State was so bad for the league and I thought his responses to it were so tone deaf and the burner accounts and all of that, I didn't like any of it. And I was highly, highly critical of him. I have now come to have find him to be one of my favorite guys in the league. I think the fact that he owns exactly who he is on social media is incredibly endearing. I think the fact that aside from the injuries, his sustained greatness at this stage in his career is breathtaking. And I, he has made some bad choices as far as trusting Kyrie to be his wingman, but th- those teams haven't failed because he hasn't been good enough. And so Durant's probably a guy I've come around on uh, to a degree. On Rodgers, here, listen, I believe both of these things are true. Since going to the Jets, Colin, Rodgers has handled everything perfectly, bonding with teammates, going to the offseason stuff, giving money back to make it easier for them to potentially acquire players, defending Sean Bay- or defending Nathaniel Hackett against Sean Payton, and I think intentionally maybe upping the scrutiny on Sean Payton because the Broncos and Jets could both be fighting theoretically for that last wild card spot. I think all of that is smart. That doesn't change the fact that he is a soon-to-be 40-year-old quarterback behind the worst offensive line he will have played behind in a decade in a far tougher division than he was in last year, who last season was bad. And people have tried to convince themselves, oh, but he turned it on at the end of the year. No, he did not. In those final five games, when they went 4-1, and he averaged 200 yards passing and had five total touchdowns, three interceptions. And for the third consecutive year, last year ended in Lambeau with either a Super Bowl berth on the line, a conference championship berth on the line, or a playoff berth on the line with the ball in Aaron's hands, and he didn't make the play. His final throw as a Packer is a duck to midfield in double coverage in a must-win game against the Lions. I, we have no, the only precedent we have for a quarterback at his age having a, a precipitously down season and then bouncing back is Brady. And we have a decade of evidence that Aaron is not Brady. So I can give him credit for handling everything properly, but I do not think the Jets are going to be that good. And I do not think Aaron is anywhere close to still a top five, much less an MVP quarterback. Wow. Good stuff today. And uh, the influencer, uh, Nick Wright. I'm going to go at yeah. least two more I'm weeks. An influencer. We're going two more weeks, and we're going to see if this oh. thing works. <laughs> Why don't you, Colin? Do what I said last week. Why don't you just say you're not going to shave or get your hair cut until the Chiefs lose, and just see what it, see how it goes. <laughs> you get a haircut right before the season starts, and then say you're not going to do it until the Chiefs lose. And can't then do anything to be like, hey, I did it for the show. Yeah. You'll have a beard longer than, what's it, ZZ Top <laughs> uh, you know, by, by the time we get to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Good seeing you, buddy. We'll talk soon. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.